Listen, Flash games were freaking amazing. Follow me here. As a kid, I loved playing video games. But you know what was also true when I was a kid? I had no money. None of my own at least. Not enough that I could just buy whatever game I wanted, whenever I wanted, willy nilly. Hell, I'm an adult now and I still can't do that. So let's wind the clock back to the early to mid 2000s. Some kids had a PlayStation, some had a GameCube, and some had an Xbox. The market was pretty divided, but you know what united all of us? The personal computer. Or, or a Mac, you, you could have had a Mac. And with the computer came a few classic games. You had Minesweeper, Pinball, Solitaire, to this day, I still have not learned what the hell this game's about. But after a while, playing the same three games over and over again can get boring. And what was it that came to the aid of millions of kids, teens, and adults all over the world? Flash games, baby, you know what it is. Fancy Pants, Bloons, Bowman, Cube Field. These games would give hours upon hours of entertainment, free of charge, and available at a moment's notice. Depending on how long it took for the web page to load, I mean, let's face it, the internet back then was kind of trash. Now, you might be thinking, sure, Flash games were awesome, but it's not like they're going anywhere, right? Ugh, you poor illiterate child. Your favorite Flash games are indeed going away forever, and I'm going to tell you exactly why right after this. Hey guys, Tamago here. Did you know that Tamago is Japanese for egg? Here's how you write the Japanese kanji for Tamago in seven easy steps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Simple, right? No! Hey, who said that? Introducing the new Tamago 24-7-4 Kanji Merchandise, available exclusively on shoptamago.com. We've got shirts, hats, jumpers, hoodies. It's all embroidered, all high quality, and all you can eat. No, don't eat it. These are available right now, so head on over to shoptamago.com or check out the merch shelf below the video. Speaking of which... Thanks, bro. So... Flash game, what does that even mean? Well, typically when a game is referred to as a flash game, it means it was created using a program called Macromedia Flash and the accompanying action script programming language. This was one of the earliest ways that developers could make games for web browsers and quickly became the most popular way too with websites like Newgrounds and Miniclip pioneering the way for hosting flash games and flash animated content. When something is made in flash, it's exported as an SWF or Swift file and this is a lightweight file type, meaning that content could be uploaded and downloaded significantly faster than that of other file types. For example, this JPEG is 60 kilobytes, whereas this Swift file is 4. Now, in order for a computer to run SWF files on a web browser, it needs to have the free Flash Player plugin installed. You ever turned on your computer and a pop up appeared saying, Hey, you need to update to the latest version of Flash Player? Yeah, that's what it was talking about. Seeing as how widely used Flash content was on the internet back in the 2000s, Flash Player was pretty much a necessity, and as a result, it had the largest install base of any browser plugin ever, with it being said to have been as high as 99% of all web browsers having some form of it installed. With the software being more accessible and lightweight than its predecessors, and the browser plugin having such a vast install base, it makes sense that pretty much all games being developed and played on web browsers were Flash games. Eventually, Macromedia was acquired by Adobe in 2005, leading to the software being rebranded as Adobe Flash as they continued to develop the interface, the ActionScript programming language, and the browser plugin. Now, that sounds all fine and dandy, so what's the problem? What is happening to Flash? Well, despite Flash's dominance on the internet in the 2000s, come the 2010s, it was losing its popularity very quickly. For example, prior to the release of the iPhone 4 in 2010, people wondered would this be the one to finally include Flash support? And Apple was kind of like, nah, nah, not this time. And not next time. Well, not any time, really. In an open letter posted to the official Apple website, the late Steve Jobs essentially roasted Flash, stating that concerns with security, battery life, and user experience were reasons that Apple wouldn't be allowing Flash technology on any of their mobile devices. Now, while these were sensible concerns to have, it's likely that the main reason for Apple's aversion to Flash was that they didn't want their devices to be reliant on a third-party company like Adobe. 
Adobe. This led to Adobe launching a We Hot Apple ad campaign, where they responded to Apple's anti-flashness with an open letter of their own. But Apple had already put their foot down, and with them being the industry leader in smartphones, other manufacturers quickly followed suit. In addition to this, mobile applications were becoming increasingly popular with the introduction of the App Store and Google Play Store. Couple this with the rapid uptake in people who have smartphones or some form of smart device, and mobile games quickly started to eclipse browser games. I mean sure, Angry Birds is basically just a ripoff of Crush the Castle, but one of them has had their second successful feature length film, and the other is gonna lead to people in the comments asking, what the hell is Crush the Castle? In 2015, YouTube switched from displaying videos in a Flash-based video player to one that used HTML5, the new open web standard that had just been released the year before and provided much of the same functionality that Flash did, but without the need to install a browser plugin. Unfortunately, this meant no more games of Snake while waiting for the video you were watching to load, but hey, at least we got fidget spinner buffering. Yeah. As well as all this, amidst the plugin's declining reputation, many companies had been slowly decreasing the use of Flash technology on their websites, and more and more non-Flash-based browser games were starting to gain popularity, such as 2048 and agar.io. In fact, in 2016, Adobe themselves even renamed the software from Adobe Flash to Adobe Animate, and this was significant for a few reasons. One, it reflected the software's increasing use for the creation of HTML5 content over Flash content. Two, it signified a refocused vision on the software being used for creating animated video rather than interactive applications. And three, it showed that even Adobe didn't want to be associated with the name Flash anymore. This all came to a head in July of 2017 when Adobe posted an update to their official blog stating that they were planning to end of life Flash player in 2020. Interesting choice of words if you ask me, I mean, I didn't kill that man, your honor. I just end of life them. What this looks like in practical terms is that Adobe is moving to end all support for Flash in 2020, with the entire internet, it seems, following suit. For example, most web browsers have Flash disabled by default now, and by 2020, Flash support will be removed completely. So what does this mean for Flash games? Will I still be able to play Happy Wheels? No. Okay, well, maybe. Y you know what? Probably. It's like this. Flash Player will not run on browsers anymore, so any games that require Flash in order to be played will not be playable using Flash Player on a web browser. With that said, many Flash developers and Flash portals are currently working on and have been working on alternatives for a while now. For example, Miniclip, one of the largest Flash game hosting websites in the world, has been developing games made using technologies other than Flash, such as the Unity engine, for quite a long time now, and they've even dabbled in mobile applications, including the wildly successful 8-Ball Pool. Other developers have also discussed migrating their games from Flash over to more modern open standards, so I imagine this could be done for many games, including Happy Wheels, especially when you consider that they do have a mobile version of the game that isn't built on Flash. Realistically though, most games won't be migrated over. Many of them are really old, and it probably wouldn't be worth it for the original developers to dedicate the time and resources to keeping a game that's pretty much just nostalgia bait at this point alive. Keep in mind, almost all of these games were developed by individuals who just wanted to dabble in games development either as a potential future career path or even just for fun. Hell, even I followed a tutorial on Flash game development and put this thing together a few years ago. So you play as a spaceship and you shoot the other spaceships and they explode. Whoa. None of the artwork, effects, or even code was created by me. I pretty much just copied and pasted it from Congregate, but 
I still claim it, Flash hosting websites will likely become a graveyard of once widely enjoyed but now unplayable games unless the owners have a plan set in motion to support other forms of content on their site. For example, Newgrounds founder Tom Fulp explained that the end of Flash won't mean the end of Newgrounds since the website has been updated to support HTML5 and other non-Flash content. It is however still likely that most of the classic games on the website will be unplayable. This means that a lot of the games we know and love, either because we played them ourselves or with friends or we watched our favorite YouTubers play them, might soon be lost forever. And this is why I think Blue Maximus Flashpoint project is pretty cool. This is an effort to preserve as many Flash games and animations as possible and make them downloadable through a database. So far, they've managed to save over 30,000 games and 2,000 animations, and they're still going strong. With efforts like these, although it's unlikely that new generations will stumble upon and share around Flash games like the old days, at least a huge part of internet history can be preserved. Now with Flash games, there's so much to talk about, as I have done extensively on my channel already and as I hope to continue doing right up until and even after the end of Flash Player in 2020. So if you'd like to hear me talk about some of the best, worst and weirdest Flash games to come out over the past two decades, then make sure you're subscribed with your notifications turned on because it's about to get nostalgic up in here. In the meantime, I want you guys to help me out. Leave a comment below of a Flash game that you think was underrated, like one you think deserved more attention. I want to be going in the comments and seeing anyone writing, oh, fancy pants, because everyone knows that game, okay? It's legendary, everyone knows it. Put a game that you think more people should have known about that was never as popular, but you really liked it. And I'll use those suggestions to create a list of underrated games that I'll talk about in a future video. But until then, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed a shop time ago.com and I'll see you in the next video. Peace. <laughs>